There are a million different types of databases that we can go build our applications with. And in C Sharp and .NET, one of the most popular tools we can use is Entity Framework Core. But what if I told you there were other things we might consider? Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. In this video, I'm going to look at one tool that you might not have heard of, and no, it's not Entity Framework Core. We're going to be looking at something called DBUP, and this is going to be a very introductory video for looking at DBUP, what it's capable of doing, and how you can start using it in your own applications. If that sounds interesting, remember to subscribe to the channel and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. With that said, let's go to Visual Studio, check out this basic console application, and see what we can do. Okay, to start things off, I have a very simple program here, which I'm going to walk through, but I want to start by going over to our project file. In this project file, I want to share which NuGet packages we're going to be using. So you might see on the screen right now, I do have SQLite included here. So yes, this example is going to be using SQLite. So we have dbup core and dbup specifically for SQLite. This is going to be the core package. And then of course, dbup does have other connectors that you can use. So if you want Postgres, MySQL, SQL Server, whatever it happens to be, you can get it to work with dbup. But I am going to be using SQLite just to keep things super simple here. That means this next line here, you see Microsoft Data SQLite. I'm including this just so that I have the unmanaged SQLite libraries also included. So these three things together give us dbup with the ability to have a local SQLite database. Cool. With that stuff out of the way, let's look at some code because that's probably a little bit more interesting. The part that we're going to look at in particular is just this much code. So it's not a ton of code. There's actually more other code on the screen just to have this example set up so we can go and investigate what's looking on. Not many lines, but here's what we're able to do with it. You can see on line eight, I have this deploy changes dot two. And then beyond that, we can see that we're going to be using a SQLite database. So it's using this connection string right here on line seven, just going to be a file that's in my running directory. So we can use that connection string right here. And you might have guessed it, but using that one NuGet package where we have SQLite allows us to get this part to work. So if you were using some of the other NuGet packages to do MySQL or Postgres, then you would have a different method here to go set things up. This next part we're going to come back to. So still on this video, we'll see this and log to console. As you might guess by the name, it's going to log the information to the console when we go to run this. So we're going to build an upgrader by running these things together. So this is a nice like fluent builder syntax to work with. I really like this kind of thing, makes it nice and readable. And there's lots of different other options if you were to kind of step through all of the stuff inside. Before we move on, this is just a quick reminder that I do have a course on C Sharp refactoring available on Dome Train. Refactoring is one of the most critical skills that you can learn as a software engineer, and this helps you continue to build upon applications that already exist, making sure that they can scale and have extensibility. I walk you through a bunch of various techniques and give you some examples that we walk through together to see how we can apply these techniques to refactor the code. Check out the pinned comment and the links in the description to get this course. Now back to the video. Now we see on line 14, a single line to go perform the upgrade. So we're going to come back to what upgrading actually means, but I want to basically jump through the rest of this code super quick at the bottom just to talk about what's going on. So we are going to see if the upgrade was successful right here from line 15 and 16, just to print some info to the console. And the rest of this is just some SQLite specific stuff. So we can go see the schema of the database that we have to work with. So this part that I have highlighted is not specific specific at all to DB up. It's just so that you can go test things out, navigate. And I am going to show another tool called SQLite expert, just something I like to use to have a visualization of the database. So you're probably eager to see this thing run and I'm going to go run it for you right now so we can see what it does. Okay, so we have a little bit of stuff printed to the console here. We can see beginning database upgrade is checking the journal table. Journal table doesn't exist, but it's because there is no database. And then you can see no new scripts need to be executed. Completing. Success. This basically suggests to us that it tried to go do a database upgrade. But as you might have guessed, there is nothing to upgrade. We don't have any migrations or anything like that. We don't even have a database. There's nothing. And then you can see that it succeeded. So it finished because there was nothing really to do. And when we go to ask for the database schema, as you can see, there's nothing here. So this code, I'll move this over a little bit. This code that was doing the reading from SQLite said, hey, there's nothing. 
So the interesting part about this output that we can see here is, yeah, there is no schema, but what might not be obvious from here is that we actually did create a database. It might not be obvious because I went to go run this part down here where it was actually connecting out to the SQLite database, and technically if it wasn't there, this code would have went and created it, but the part above where it's trying to do the upgrade will create an empty database for us. So now we have an empty database. That's not that exciting. You might be saying, Nick, why the heck do we want this? And the answer is that you can leverage this to have database migrations. So this is one of the things that people love in Entity Framework Core. I'm not about to sit here and suggest that just by using DBUP, you get all of the power in the world from Entity Framework Core. But if you're someone like me, I just don't really like using Entity Framework Core. It's a me problem. I'm not saying it's bad. I think Entity Framework Core is awesome. It's just not the way that I like to code. I like having something like this to go do my migrations. Then I can use something else. I like using Dapper on top of this, which will be a future video. And from there, I can go write my own SQL. This type of thing works for me. But it's not that exciting right this moment because we don't have any migrations which is the next part we're going to talk through. So you can see on line 10, it says with scripts embedded in assembly. So if you were paying close attention to what's on my screen, I do have a scripts folder inside of my solution explorer. So I'm going to go over and press script.0001.sql. And you can see that I made this little table here called blog post. So this is a SQL file. This is SQL syntax, well, SQLite syntax in particular. I'm going to create a table called blog post. It's going to have these three columns. And we can basically go have DB up create a schema for us. So it will go run this code during the migration, thanks to jumping back to the code, this line 10 right here. So it's going to look in the executing assembly for this script and then go run the migration. Well, you might say, well, Nick, it's already included here. Why didn't it run? And that's because I have this properties panel pulled up in the top right here because I wanted to be able to talk about this. You can see the build action with this file selected does say none. What you're going to want to do is change it to an embedded resource. Now, when we go to run this, we're going to have some slightly different behavior. And that's because this script is now truly embedded as a resource in the assembly. Before that, it was in our project, but we weren't telling Visual Studio or MS Build what to go do with this thing. It's like, thank you very much for the file. I don't have a purpose for it. See you later. Now we're saying it's an embedded resource. It will get included in the assembly. So when we go to run line 10 in particular, like it will configure things to go leverage that script. Let's go press play and see what happens. And this is a little bit more exciting, right? It's still just some console output, but we can see executing database server script, and then it pulls out the .0001 SQL file. You can see checking whether the journal table exists, creating the schema versions table. So we're going to see that in just a moment. And then it says it was created, the upgrade was successful, and we see a success. This line here that I have highlighted is the line that I print to the console specifically, and that's because we can check the result of the upgrader. If we look at the database schema, we'll see that blog posts is a table there, schema versions, and SQLite sequence. These are three tables that got created as part of the upgrade. At this point, we were able to go run a migration, and that means that this instance of the SQLite database has been configured. And I want to show you, because I'm not using any fancy tricks here, I can't get my editor to promise you that he didn't manipulate this video in some way, but I'm just going to go run it again. And hopefully you believe me, but hey, look, there it is, we just ran it, and the same thing happened. Except you can see that it didn't go do the upgrade. And that's because there were no migrations that were needed. We already upgraded it. I didn't go change any other, I didn't remove the script from being an embedded resource, and we still have that schema here. What's really cool about this is that it keeps track of the migrations for you, so it knows how your database has been upgraded based on those migrations, and then it decides what it needs to run. In this case, nothing. We've already done it. Just to show you the final output, what I want to do now is open up SQLite Expert and just have a visual of what's in the database. What I've done now is I've opened up SQLite Expert. Like I said, this is one of the tools that I really like to use. I'm going to drag and drop devleader.db. This is the SQLite database that I made. I'm just going to open it here. And you can see that we have the two tables here. I think the other one that we were seeing is a built-in table. It's not being shown. So blog post is the one. 
that I created as part of the migration. There's no data in it though, right? But you can already see the columns up at the top. The row ID is the built-in one in SQLite if you're not familiar. I made my own ID column just because I was creating the schema that I wanted to play around with. If we go over to the DDL, you can see this is the schema that I had in my code as well. So this is the exact same thing with the three columns that I created. And I'm gonna jump over to schema versions because I didn't make this one myself. And if we look closely here, we can see that it's going to, that's the DDL, so not what I wanna show you, but let's go to the data that's more interesting. We can see the schema version ID. So this is going to be the first version of that schema, thanks to our migration. We can see the script name that's included here. And if you recall, I had mine called script 0001.sql and you can see the rest of the stuff here. This is going to be the assembly and then the location within the assembly here. It's in that scripts folder. And then it has the date that it was applied as well. So we get this really simple sort of migration checkpoint list and that way dbup like we saw knows how much it's done for upgrades. At this point, what we could do is we could add other scripts for going to do migrations. Keep in mind the one I showed you was very, very simple. This is where Entity Framework Core and some of the scaffolding stuff could come into play. But in this script that I showed you, it just created a table. If you wanted to in a new migration, you could go make a new table. But when you start having to move data, manipulating the schemas that already exist, these scripts might get a little bit more complicated. So I don't mean to trivialize it. It's just not the focus of this video. But with that said, we got to see some DB up in this video. What I want to do in the next video is show you DB up with something I like to use called Dapper instead of Entity Framework Core, and we'll see that inside of an ASP.NET Core application. So if you're interested in seeing that when that video is uploaded, you can check it out here. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.